Hi, my name is Park Sun and I'm the Head of Programs at the Centre for Fathering. Today with me is Mud. He calls Hello. Me Mud. <laughs> He's the founder of a company, a very interesting and a very fun company called Let's Learn Outside. So today we'll let him tell you what he does together with his wife and uh, why he has started this company. So thank you, Matt, for joining me and for being willing to come on this program. Uh, always a pleasure. You invite, I will come. No problem. <laughs> <laughs> I think the first time we met was like, what, four years ago? Something like that. Yeah, yes, yeah. yes, yes. Oh, quite yeah. a long time has passed. <laughs> and I, I still remember our first meeting, you know, the impression that I had about you and your wife, that you both are fun-loving people. And I mm -hmm. guess what you have done or what you have started as this company, you know, is, is a perfect match, a fit with your personalities and the way you, you know, the way you just live your life. And you have young children. How old are they? Uh, we have two boys. Uh, it's, uh, they are six and three year old. So they are preschool age. Yes. And I have been uh, not really following, but I do <laughs> follow your uh, Instagram page, mm -hmm. uh, prof, um, yeah, account, and yes, your photographs are really inspiring <laughs> in a sense that, I mean, I wish I could relive those days again. <laughs> yeah, right. so basically we just do document what we do, then, then we just want to share uh, and, and perhaps inspire parents that play can be easy, it can just be like something you do after school, then, then, then it's, it, it will be uh, a, a good time for your child already. It doesn't have to be like structured. It can be so unstructured, very random. And, and that's what we want to share with parents. Yes, yes. I think that message comes across very, very loud and clear. So tell us why you started this company. Uh, you started it in 2016. So you've been doing it for quite a while. Why you started and what do you do? Okay, so uh, lesson outside, we do two things. We run programs for preschoolers, so we bring them out to play. Uh, we, we focus on urban outdoor play, so, so things like in the neighborhood, uh, uh, nearby parks. So, so we, we plan adventures there, so, uh, so we like to call it learning adventures. So that's the, the children beat. Uh, we also run professional development workshop for preschool educators. Uh, so where, where we, we share ideas of how to plan play session, like how we do it, right? The, the, the secret sauce to our play session, we add a le level of adventure, a level of story, so that when the children are playing, they get more immersed into it. They will just want to do it and, 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 and they will forget that they are tired and all that. But at the same time, uh, there will be learning happening. So this is what we want to create. We want to inspire parents, teachers to create meaningful play moments uh, that is memorable for their children. Okay, so that's what you do. But why did you come up? How did you come up with this idea? Uh, okay. What, what need are you trying to meet? <laughs> you, you know, when you ask me that question, my, my mind goes like boom, very far. So, <laughs> so, so uh, before the lesson outside, we, we were running training programs uh, for primary school, for secondary school. So my background, I've always been doing training. Uh, leadership, outdoor, uh, communication skill, all that. Yeah, so, so uh, in, who oh, I can't remember, in the early 2000s, 2012, 2012. Okay. In 2012, uh, there was this program called uh, Program for Active Learning. Uh, it's run by uh, MOE, so they get uh, external uh, vendors like us to conduct it. So we bid for the program, we got it, uh, then we, we do it, right? So we write the program, we run it, uh, and we realize something that, that, that children love to play and, 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 and they might be missing this play element. Uh, an example that I can share is uh, things like picking up leaves, picking up sticks. They, they, they get so happy when they can do it. I guess uh, in, in, in modern life, uh, everything seems dirty when they are brown and, and, and dusty, right? Yeah, but it's not okay. I just want to put it in. Our parents, the outdoors is not dirty. It's organic. It's natural, okay? We can always wash our hands. Okay, get back to my story. So I saw that, right? So children want this opportunity to play, to be messy, to run around, to shout, to laugh. Then I realized, okay, this program for active learning was like a spark. Then I realized we need to start this whole uh, segment of, of, of the company and we call it Let's Learn Outside. So Let's Learn Outside focus on that play-based learning. So, so from that one program, now we are expanded to so many. And eventually, we, we, we kind of stopped doing the leadership communication. And now we focus on this play-based learning. 
but we still slot in the values education. Values education is always the base because we always believe uh, children who can self-manage, can, can, can interact well with each other, other people uh, from the base, then the academic and any other pursuits will, will fall very nicely, right? So it's about self-management, managing the relationship. If you can do that, and we try to make them achieve that through play, then everything else might fall nicely. So that was the spark, the program for active learning. I saw a kid is so happy, just pick up stick. I'm like, wow. Then after that, it just, it just expanded to what we are doing today. Mm, yep. I, I like the word play because I'm... I think it plays a very important thing. If uh, if I remember correctly, it was Fred Rogers, you know, the Mr. Rogers fame. Uh, he's the one who said that, you know, play is the work of children, right? Mm -hmm. uh, I think Singaporean parents, maybe not limited to Singapore, but uh, we can only speak about modern, uh, modern, modern working, busy parents. <laughs> yeah, you know, the, the parents are always saying, you know, stop playing and go back to your work, mm -hmm. right? Okay, it's anything that is not related to you know, schoolwork is considered play, you know. Uh, mm. So it, play has been viewed in a negative light that, you know, play should be something you only do when you have spare time. And believe me, you do not have spare time. Every, every mm -hmm. available minute should be spent on your studies. I mean, that's, I think, what a typical mm -hmm. Singaporean parent would think. Can you, can you tell us, you know, persuade us why play for children is so important? Okay, I'm glad you asked that question. So when, when, when we started lesson outside, the hardest thing to sell is play. Because everybody view play is just for fun, right? Like, why should I pay you to play with my child, right? So play should be free. Uh, so so that, that, that was a hurdle. That was like, we, we, we were finding the messaging uh, for quite a while. Because inside our head, we know play is the, the, the way to go, right? Play, play is learning, play, play. Play uh, provides an opportunity for children to explore, right? So, so that was the hurdle. Uh, very hard to sell play. So, so, so we we kind of uh, pulled the handbrake a bit and we did a bit of educating. Uh, so advocating, uh, and 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 we messaging out that play is learning. Fun is the outcome of play. The process of play is the one that we want. And during that process, the experimenting, the the the, the handling challenges, negotiating, problem solving, decision making is the one we want. And the beautiful part is the children don't really consciously know they are doing it, but they actually learn something in a fun way. So play has a purpose. Uh, play, like you say, is 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 the kid's job. That's that's how they function. Uh, so so so. Uh, that is what we want to uh, share with the world, that the process of play is the one we want. And the beautiful part is the outcome of play is fun. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for, thanks for that. I, I think we're on the same page on, for, regarding play. Uh, do you know what's the opposite of play? What? <laughs> <laughs> work, is it? No, sleep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, most people would think work, right? You know? Mm -hmm. uh, so there's a there's an old English saying, all work and no play makes Jack a dull boy. So I always ask people, what do you think that word dull mean? What do you think? Uh, the first word comes to my mind, stagnant, stagnant, uh, uninspired. Uninspired, bored, right? That's also bored, another yeah. very common, yeah. I, I think there's another meaning to it, and that is your, the child's mental acuity <clears throat> is not sharp. So the opposite of sharp is dull or blunt, right? Now, many, many studies have found that that is actually true. Uh, you know, there are also relation, correlations between play deprivation and crime. For example, many, not, not the majority, but many of the mass shooters, all right, mm -hmm. during their childhood, they were deprived of play. <laughs> ah, yeah. Okay, but perhaps the, the deprivation of... Uh expressing themselves, exploring right. their ideas, right? So, so I guess that, 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 that could be it. Or, or even, or even uh, as they grow up, uh, I, I always message this to parents. Uh, what we want children to be when they enter primary school is, 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 is a confident child, right? Mm. A, child, a child who do not know how to tie shoelace, who do not know how to catch a ball, might feel lousy. And, and this might affect their studies as well because it relates to self-esteem. 
right? Even if they can spell, they, they, they can, can do math, even at Pan B1. They can say the alphabets forward and backwards. <laughs> yes, but when they go for like, like, like social interaction kind of activity where they play, uh, they need, they need to, to negotiate. If they cannot, I think it will affect a bit of their self-esteem and this might spiral. So that's why we must make them uh, be in, 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 in situation where they can sharpen this, like sharpen uh, decision making, problem solving. That's the basic. Then I think I think we will have a confident child uh, ready to enter like the school world <laughs> in primary school. So let's talk more about what you do. Okay, so you, you're basically, um, you, you worked very closely with school educators. So give us an example of how you work with educators uh, to, you know, to introduce the learning through adventure to the kids. Okay, so uh, we conduct professional development for a program workshop for educators. So we've been doing that since 2018. Uh, so it started out with me writing a book. Okay, <laughs> so, yeah. so this book, Learning Adventure Toolkit, it all started with this uh, 68 page book. Uh, so so, so we, we, we wrote a book, then we uh, cast it to the wind. <laughs> then, 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 then it all started from there. Teach, we, we realized, oh, there is a market. Teachers want to learn how to uh, plan uh, meaningful outdoor experiences. So, so uh, we've been doing that since 2018. Uh, up to today, around uh, 2,000 plus teachers we have trained uh, collectively. And, 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 and the amazing part is even through COVID, uh, I, you can guess, COVID, I couldn't go to school and conduct the program. So we had to pivot a bit uh, and then we focus on teachers training because the mission is still there. I want children to play. But if I cannot be there, I need to enable people to make that happen. So I'm enabling teachers to make that play happen through the training. So even through the COVID period, we have Zoom workshops and all that. Uh, some might think it's not possible to teach outdoor play through Zoom, but I did it. So, <laughs> so, so, so that, that was like an innovation on our side. Uh, so we do that, we do that. We, we ask teachers, uh, so basically what is the learning adventure model or we call it the learning adventure approach. Uh, is how do you look at spaces that you have, even the boring, dull looking spaces, tiny spaces, how can you activate it? Activate means bring it to life. Can a bench be a boat? Uh, can, the, can, can that little garden be an enchanted forest? Uh, can that, that, that boring looking playground that the children play every single day that is green in color be a spaceship one day, be a pirate ship another day? So we just want to ignite teachers' uh, creativity, look at the spaces, resources, uh, craft learning adventures, and, and, and for the student to enjoy. So it will be so. So the whole idea, at the end of the day, I want teachers to have endless ideas uh, for the student. So the student can enjoy a variety of experiences outdoor in that small little place they have outside their school. Wow, sounds like fun. Yes, I think that's a... Uh... <laughs> Sounds like a very low cost, maybe even free way of play. Mm. You don't yes, have to, yes. you don't have to go to Toy R Us or anywhere to buy expensive toys which don't last very long. I mean, don't last in the sense that the kids, you know, probably won't still be interested in it after some time, and then you have to, you know, give it away or it ends up in your storerooms. <laughs> Yeah, the, the, the best kind of toys are the passive ones, you know, like the stick, the leaf, because if it, it, it invites uh, active thinking. Mm. But if you buy like a toy car, it's really an active toy. So, so your, your brain kind of thing that you have to play, but in one way, right? Yes. So, so, yeah. so, so actually we can solve that. So if parents are thinking, uh, I have so many toys, so much toys at home, my child is not playing, that one toy only lasts one hour, you need to think how else to play with it. Can you make a RAM? Can you add a little bit of adventure, story? Add, add a storybook with that toy car. What can you do with it? Yeah, so, so it's just a bit of active facilitation. But your children will take over. Don't worry. They have plenty of ideas. You just need to kick start it. I read somewhere, I can't remember where, but uh, there was this suggestion, which I thought was a good suggestion, that if a parent buys a, a toy for a child, uh, don't tell the child how to play with it first. Mm. Just give it to the child and watch how he or she plays with it. You see? So like what you were saying, you know, uh, when, once the child is taught, this is how you play with this toy, then it's kind of restricts the child already mm. right and then uh, after playing you know like pushing a car after pushing it a, a thousand times okay what else can i do about it <laughs> so they're now looking for another toy okay so and that's why i think parents feel the need to always buy something new uh, you bring the child to the toy shop they will always look for something different uh, correct so 
Yeah, so what I think you are suggesting makes a lot of sense and I think you have already proven that it works and that is, you know, uh, yeah, attach a story to it, create a story out of that toy. Uh, I think Legos are the best, right? Legos, you mm. can do almost anything out of it. But sometimes the perfectionistic parents, you know, will say, okay, let's build a house together and then the child builds what he thinks is a house and the parents looks at it and says, that does not look like a house at all. Let me show you how it's done. I think, what do you think about that? Uh, I think we should just allow children to, to just express themselves. Uh, um, it's just about divergent thinking. Uh. So, so you just need to allow them to, to explore different ways. Even if they make a crooked house and the house topple, you find the learning in that. Because why? Because the base is small, so we need to make a wider base. So there's always opportunity or teachable moment, maybe the keyword, teachable moment in every interaction uh, where, where, when the child is playing. So, so as parents, uh, we can, we can kickstart it, then we challenge the child a bit, let them take over, then we just encourage, acknowledge at the back. And that is how we should approach play. So we shouldn't control uh, so much, let them be. And, 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 and the biggest tip is this, messy is okay. <laughs> in fact, it's good. <laughs> <laughs> yes, because it's just an extension of what is in their mind. You might look like a mess, but inside their head, it could be a map of a magical place. That tiny brick is actually a giant house. That, that, that giant uh, monster truck is actually a tiny, tiny thing ends around. So, so in the children's mind, uh, it, it could be anything. But perhaps what you want to do is you maybe uh, you, you, you practice routine, uh, make routine where, where you tell the child, okay, you can make a mess only at this area. Uh, it takes practice. It won't happen like at one time. You just need to keep repeating and say, okay, hey, hey, look, uh, you, you, you want to play? You can be a mess, but you only need to be messy here. After that, we need to clean up. So set ground rules, set routines, uh, give permission for them to be messy. All this will help the child to be comfortable with themselves and, and be comfortable to just express because we want children to express and if we see something that we need to uh, align a bit, you know, the values and all that, and it's the opportune time because they are young, they are still receptive to, 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 to changes. Uh, mm. and, this, and this is what uh, I always uh, uh, share with my friends, share with parents. It's just a five or six years investment what kind of child you want when they enter primary school at seven year old? Uh, some, somebody that can manage themselves, somebody can make their own breakfast. Because if you do that, will our life as parents be easier? It is. So it's just a six years kind of uh, investment for a full year. Parkson, you have older children, right? So, so, right, right. So, so, so if like you don't, don't settle that, that six years, the self management beat then you might need to extend it until they're 12, 13, even 18. Well, then I think uh, we, we, we are not giving ourselves a chance to just uh, uh, relax a bit like, when we're older. So, so, so my children are still small. Like, so I'm trying to say something. I'm, I'm just visioning out, expressing my future, what I want it to be. So I'm, I'm, I'm doing the work now so that my future will be more like, uh, no, relax, enjoy family time, not so much on the managing all the packing yeah, and all that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> do, do you think play is just for children or...? What about adults? Do adults need to play? Yes. <laughs> so so uh, last year, I think there's this uh, conversation about recess time. I don't mm. know uh, how, how, how it, it pops up. Uh, I feel, okay, I will link to why adults must play. Okay, so I feel recess time should be longer than uh, whatever the school is uh, doing. Some school is 30 minutes, some school is shorter, I guess. Uh, but I think at least one hour. If, mm. you have been, if you have visited a primary school, you will see how short it is they line up to buy the food already how long they want to sit down how long let they eat they still want to play right so that 30 minutes is super short it's not a good amount of time to decompress so how does this link to adults adults at this at this uh, in, uh, in this story I, I will refer to teachers teachers also need to decompress right mm. so during that one hour teachers can also go to their lounge can play can relax can chit chat so and this relate to also at home right so so uh, adults have to play. Uh, it doesn't mean you have to be kiddish. It's just whatever makes you happy, what you fiddle around, right? So that is play. If you like stereos, you play with your stereos, right? At home, you 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 like to uh, cook. That is also a form of playing, right? Like, oh, what 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 can I do today special, you know? So 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 play. I think uh, is for mental health. Uh, play 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 is never out of fashion. 
uh, when I conduct like adult team building in the past, I still do if they invite me. <laughs> so, so, so adults miss playing. I love playing with adults because they will go, be, they go like very uh, childlike. Yeah, so, so, so uh, it's just about uh, maybe putting aside our ego, uh, that, that, that parent kind of uh, stature, and then just go, go a bit lower and play and have fun. I think your child will love you for that lah, because you'll be like a hero to them. <laughs> That's right. I think I think adults need to learn to play as well. I, I like this quotation by George Bernard Shaw, a very famous uh, writer. He says that we do not stop playing because we grow old. Uh, we grow old because we stop playing. Oh, I agree. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. So, so, yeah, yeah, so I, so I, 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 I'm, I'm in my late 30s, uh, so I don't know whether you can see it. But sometimes I see myself like, oh, uh, I don't know. I'm just, I'm just thinking. I don't really look that age. Uh. So I think because of the, the constant playing <laughs> and all that. Uh, so sometimes people think I'm young. Uh, so that's, that's quite... Yeah, yeah. Okay. True. Definitely. You have a very youthful spirit. Uh, but we did have some collaboration in the past. Uh, you mm -hmm. did conduct a workshop called Le Let's Learn to Play or Learn to Play. And uh, where parents uh, came to, you know, to learn from you and... Your workshop was something I've not seen for a long, long time, maybe, you know. And you actually got the parents to play. Right, right, right. So you're and, like, whoa. <laughs> and the feedback that came was very, very surprising and positive. And, you know, many of them said, oh, it's been a long time since I played. <laughs> play, play is an emotion. Uh, I think, I think uh, like buying things, things that you do with emotion, you will remember. Uh, so, so I kind of, maybe parents, uh, when they play, they get ignited with memories, you know, just like taste, right? So, so, so that emotion bring out memories and you think back, hey, what kind of uh, childhood did I have? And what kind of person I am today? Was that playing outdoors help me to be what I am today? Hmm. Was this the feeling that uh, is missing in my ch children? Uh, how do I recreate this feeling for them? So, so, so the whole parents workshop is to create that, that, that reflection make them feeling. Uh, when they feel it, then it's easier to, to communicate the, the benefits of play because they know they can feel. They know uh, there is a purpose. It's purposeful. It's not just for fun. Now, you have a new project or new initiative. It's called Instant Play Ideas. And you come up with an ebook which consists, uh, contains more than 48 uh, instant home play ideas to occupy your child while you complete your chores. Wow, <laughs> I'm sure this is going to be a hot selling potato. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. Okay, uh, so, so lesson outside have been uh, around since 2016. Uh, mainly we focus on the, the, the children and the teachers, right? Uh, sometimes schools invite us for parents workshop, we do it. Uh, then we realize uh, parents who attend the workshop are asking good questions, you know, right, right, right. They do want to learn. There are a group of parents who are interested uh, in, 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 in understanding how play can help their child. So, so uh, this year we started this. Uh, it's kind of like a passion project. I don't know how to name it. Lah. So, uh, so lesson outside is the school and teachers. Uh, so this, this instant play ideas is part of Mud and Nut. Right, so if you go to our Instagram, M U D D X N A D D, Mud Nut, Mud X Nut. Uh, so it's our passion project uh, where we want to share with parents uh, things that we already do with our children, right? So, 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 so this book is like a collection of play ideas uh, that parents can do easily with things they can find at home. No need to buy anything. It can be as simple as your clothes pack, as simple as your ladle, as be simple as your ice cream stick, and, and how you can create play moments for your child that will replace the screen. So it is a screen alternative uh, kind of uh, activity. So if you are looking for looking to peel your child off the screen into playing more uh, uh, away from the screen. So this ebook is free. You can just download at uh, instantplayideas.com. Uh, you can see inside some of the ideas. Uh, choose one that you are comfortable with. That is how you should start. Choose one that you know you can do it. Then you just do it with your child. So it comes with some guidance at the front. We call it the set up, play, walk away, right? So you set up, you play, and you walk away. So when you walk away, you can do your chores. So there's an explanation for that. 
Also, it comes with a, a, a email guidance. Like you'll get five emails uh, to guide you through how to get it uh, done. So, so, so we are experimenting this. Uh, so far, a lot of parents have downloaded. Uh, so, but we haven't engaged the community yet. It's so new. Uh, I hope if you are watching this, just go on to the website, get it, read it. Uh, don't understand, just hit reply and I will answer your question. Wow. Okay. That's a very, very <laughs> holistic uh, customer service. <laughs> Salesman, I'm businessman, so it comes naturally. Uh. <laughs> where, where do you get all these ideas from? I mean, 48 plus ideas. Ah, okay, okay, okay. I, I, okay, okay. Wow, you're like the first one to ask me this question. So how, how do we plan activities, right? So uh, through the years of planning activity for schools, we are being uh, tested as in our creativity because usually they will give like, an empty space that you must make an adventure, right? Because we, we are selling something, right? So we must make something that is exciting. So through that experience of planning activity in dull, boring looking spaces, we find out that actually all you need to do is think about it a little bit. So for example, uh, if you have like a bottle, then we always ask this question in the office, 20 play ideas you can do with a bottle, then we write down. Uh, so that's how it started. It's like close pack, 20 ideas to play with a close pack. Yeah, so, so that is how we start the ideas rolling. And that 20 ideas we were linked to, or oh, is there a, like a motor skill activity they can do? Is there like a science-based activity we can do? Is there like a literacy activity, numeracy activity? Is there an activity where uh, we improve the social, emotional uh, learning, the relationship? Yeah, so, so, so it, it, it uh, expands uh, that way. We start with an object, we ask the question, then we just brainstorm and you will get 48 plus. Actually, inside, I think got 90 lah. But I don't want to scare parents. They might not download. <laughs> so I put a nice uh, 48 number there. <laughs> I think parents will need 365 ideas. <laughs> <laughs> but, but the magic is this. I, I, I don't want parents to download it and think they have to do it all. You know, uh, the whole idea is to kick start. That's it. Kick start the play. Let your child be. Let them just take over. That's the thing. Take over the play. Messy is fine. Learning is happening. We can always clean up, right? Mm -hmm. So, so that 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 is the message I want parents to 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 know. Let them be, right? If especially they are preschool age, uh, there's no specialization yet because we also don't know what they are good at. Their their personality haven't been formed uh, fully. So let's just let them like explore every single avenue, right? Like that. There's this uh. Um, the, the, the multiple intelligence kind of uh, framework, right? Yeah, let them explore each one. Uh, so, so since I said that, you can also follow that. So there's the multiple intelligence, the, the eight, eight uh, qualities. Uh, when you want to plan something, you can pick one and then do experiment with your child. Then pick another quality, combine qualities. So that is what you can do as well. Wow, <laughs> this has been a great conversation. Thank you very much, Matt, for you know, talking to me about this and sharing all the great things that you're doing. I will be putting your links to your different pages, Facebook, website, and especially the uh, instant ideas uh, on the video description so that any parent or, yeah. Uh, anybody. <laughs> anybody, yes. Uh, you can even do it for yourself if you're an adult. <laughs> yes, or, or if you're an educator, you find this useful, you can also, you can also get, get a copy and just uh, explore. All right. So thank you very much. Have a nice day. <laughs> Thank you everybody. Sure Thank will. you for listening. Uh, have a wonderful day. Uh, go and play.